Many have pondered the conditions on Earth before the arrival of humans, posing a challenging question to answer. The Earth undergoes constant changes over its 4.5 billion years, witnessing realities vastly different from our present one. However, there existed a unique period around 50 million years ago when Earth, along with its inhabitants, deviated from the norm. Join us cosmic exploration with us as we delve into the mysteries of the past, discover the wonders of Earth 250 million years ago. During the early Triassic era, the Earth was dominated by the supercontinent Pangaea. This immense landmass covered roughly a third of the Earth's surface, comprising over 95% of all land. Only to the east existed other substantial land masses in the form of continental islands, including what is now North China and South China. Additionally, the minor Amurian tectonic plate, composed of present-day Korea, parts of Japan, and northeastern China, had separated from Pangaea. The world during this time also witnessed the existence of the largest ocean ever, the Panthalassic Super Ocean. Encompassing over 60% of prehistoric Earth, it surpassed the Pacific in width by at least 1,860 miles or 3,000 kilometers. Despite the abnormal proportions of land masses and bodies of water, the most striking aspect might have been the extreme temperatures. Some paleontologists estimate that during the early Triassic, temperatures ranged from 120 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit or 49 to 60 degrees Celsius. The equator running through the Paleo to sea exacerbated the scorching conditions. The severe climate of the early Triassic was a consequence of the Permo-Triassic extinction event, which occurred less than 2 million years before. This catastrophic event, likely caused by volcanic eruptions from the Siberian traps, led to the eradication of 90% of all species, including 95% of marine species and 70% of terrestrial species. Despite the challenges, life found a way in the interiors of Pangaea. Towards the poles, where temperatures were more forgiving, diverse forms of life flourished. Notably absent were dinosaurs, which would appear 7 million years later. Instead, the most abundant creature was the Lystrosaurus, a herbivorous dicynodont that survived the extinction event and became the dominant animal in southern parts of Pangaea. As time progressed, new rulers emerged in the form of archosauriforms, carnivorous creatures with crocodile-like features. The Proterosuchus, a slim reptile, was among the first of these rulers. However, the true kings of Pangaea were the Erythrosuchids, unusually large and robust archosauriforms with disproportionately giant heads, resembling those of later megatheropods. The most fearsome among them was the Erythrosuchus, the largest land carnivore during the early Triassic, with a length of 5 meters or 16.4 feet and weighing over 2 tons. Its disproportionately large skull, similar to that of the Tyrannosaurus, accounted for 20% of its total length and featured sharp conical teeth designed for gripping and tearing prey. Life in Pangaea was challenging, with occasional droughts adding to the harsh conditions. Mega monsoons brought relief, creating wet seasons of heavy rainfall, though they also intensified distinct dry periods. Fossil evidence suggests that parts of Pangaea, such as the Arcadia Formation, remained lush year-round, providing oases in the vast deserted areas. In Australia, despite the globally widespread apocalyptic conditions, rivers and lakes managed to dot the lands, creating thriving habitats. The fauna in these areas resembled those in other locations, with various archosaur forms such as the Eamimuna and Sisychus taking charge. However, in these lively oases, amphibians were the most common animals, constituting 90% of all creatures in the Arcadia Formation alone. These amphibians belonged to the ancient order Temnospondyls, known for being primitive, mostly semi-aquatic creatures. Unlike earlier giant members of this group, those in the early Triassic and Arcadia formation were generally small to medium-sized, with the largest comparable in size to modern-day Tuatara lizards. These wet habitats also provided prime conditions for various creepy crawlies roaming Pangaea, including worms, spiders, millipedes, centipedes, grasshoppers, beetles, flies, and mites, among others. The forests in these lands were healthier than those seen elsewhere globally, though their appearance was largely similar due to the limited variety of tree types during that period, an outcome of the Permo-Triassic extinction. The most common tree was the Plomalophy, a peculiar-looking plant, generally small, with most species not exceeding the height of a shoe, and the tallest reaching only 2 meters or 6.6 .6 feet. These trees were a primary food source for many herbivorous reptiles at that time. Other flora, in smaller numbers, included various types of ferns, conifers, cycads, and benetites. Despite the relatively sad state of the forests, aquatic life faced even greater challenges. 
The end days of the Permo-Triassic extinction had obliterated much of it and the waters, like the land, remained extremely hot. Tropical waters reached 40 degrees Celsius or 104 degrees Fahrenheit, with warmer fluctuations occurring. The recovery of life in the super-ocean of Panthalassa was challenging, yet new types of life managed to emerge despite these harsh conditions. Notably, the first marine reptiles were represented by ichthyosaurs, ancestors of the later ichthyosaurs but more primitive at the time. These small reptiles, usually around a meter or 3.3 feet long, were thought to swim in an eel-like manner and were well adapted for shallow water hunting along the coast of northern Pangaea. Another group, the Thalatosaurs, forebears to the Pliosaurs, was diverse, with members like the Cosasaurus, a narrow-bodied reptile about the length of a ruler, feeding on fish and resembling the Nothosaurus superficially. In the waters, microbial reefs dominated globally, hosting familiar faces from the Permian such as ray-finned fish and bony fish. Many fish groups had cosmopolitan ranges, thriving worldwide in suitable habitats. The cants, in particular, showed unprecedented diversity, experiencing new modes of life as seen with the fork-tailed rebolitric sharks. While apex predator sharks like Hyodontiforms and Eugenodontia persisted, they were not as common as before the extinction event, being rather small, below 5 feet or 1.5 meters in length. These survivors were still apex predators, found worldwide with versatile diets, possibly including freshwater rivers. Life faced multiple challenges on land, including blistering heat, powerful storms, and relentless hurricanes originating from the warm waters of the Panthalassic Ocean. Fortunately, around 30 million years later, the world's chaotic climate stabilized, and life fully recovered from the tumultuous conditions of 250 million years ago. Thanks for joining us on this cosmic journey. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the video on your screen for more mind bending content. Until next time, keep gazing at the stars. This is Cosmic Inquiries signing off.